Having a thorough understanding of basic tactics and checkers and mastering the art of double and triple jumps are essential to becoming a better player. I've set the foundation for those basic tactics in my previous videos. In today's video, I'm going to take a deeper look into some expanded tactical themes. First up, we have the in and out theme. This theme is all about pitching a piece to force your opponent to get a king and then immediately forcing that king to jump another piece back. Here's what I mean, and here's an example. Red is going to pitch a piece, which will allow white to get a king. And then red is going to immediately pitch another piece, force that king to jump. And then red is going to pull off the triple jump and trap this piece to win the game. Let's look at another example. Here, red is going to pitch this piece so white gets closer to the king row. Going to pitch this piece so white gets a king now. And then the one waiting move here for red, white captures back. And again, the triple jump and the win. Finally, let's look at another example here. This one's a little bit trickier. Red is going to allow white to get the king. And now red moves here, allowing white to get a double jump, but that's okay. Because red now has the triple jump and will pin this piece to win the game. Next up, we have the optional jumps theme. This theme is especially useful to get out of difficult situations, like this position right here. White is going to try to pin the piece on this square here, and it does that by moving to this square. Now, this piece is essentially lost, but red can deploy optional jumps and move here. Now, white has a choice to jump. If it jumps here first, then red is just going to jump this piece back and it's a draw. And if white tries to jump this way, again, same result. Red captures this piece back and it's a draw. Let's look at another example. Now here, once again, this red piece is doomed, and we can't deploy that similar tactic we used in that last example because if red tries going here, white is just going to get a double jump, and sure, red will jump this piece back, but white will be a piece up at that point. So what does red do? Well, it deploys optional jumps, and that's by moving here. Now, let's say white decides to jump this way towards the double corner. Red is going to come up here and now white can either start developing from the single corner or march in for a king. Let's say it'll go for a king. Red moves here. White gets the king. Red jumps and it's even and likely a draw. Let's go back to the original position and say white jumps here next. Well, again, red can come up here and either develop from the single corner for white now or get to go towards the king. Say the king. Moving here. It's the king. And again, it's a draw. In another example, Red is a piece up, but if it tries to move this piece and go towards the king row, white is just going to trap this piece. So 
what white does is it deploys optional jumps. And it does that by moving here. Now, if white captures this piece, red is going to just jump this piece and what's two against one. So instead, white jumps here. And then red allows the king to jump it. Red jumps back and this piece is now cornered and red will win the game. And finally, the last example of optional jumps. Red really looks to be in a difficult position here. Sure, it has this piece and can march towards the king, but it needs to do something quickly. And it actually has a triple jump on the board here. What it does is it moves here. Now, white has a different couple options to jump. Let's say it decides to jump with the king, gets the double jump here. Red is just going to get a triple jump and two against one will win the game. Now, if it captures with the single piece, instead of moving the king, it takes the single. And now a key waiting move for red now advancing towards the king row, the king is forced to jump, and now red pulls off the triple jump there. The last theme of today is called the ace in the hole. This theme freezes a position and forces your opponent to fall to a double jump, hence it's red's ace in the hole. And that move is here. This essentially freezes the position. White's piece is immobilized in this square, and white cannot move this piece or else it'll get captured next. So instead, the only playable move for white that wouldn't result in an immediate capture would be either here or here. And if it moves there, red is just going to force white to jump it and then execute the double jump. Let's look at another example. Now here, red looks to be in some trouble. The white king is going to try to force these two pieces into making some bad decisions. So red must quickly get to the king row to safety. And it does that by moving here first. Now white is going to press. Now red must go to the square next. If it goes here, white is going to press again. And if it moves here, there's the double jump or here and white is going to just move up here and this piece is now doomed so going back it must move here white is going to press again and now red moves to this square white captures and then the ace in the hole the best option for white really the only option for white is to move here and then get captured so it's two against two and a draw. Anything else and white will lose. If the king moves here, red is just going to force white to capture, get the double jump, and then the piece here is trapped. Let's look at one final example, and this one's a little complicated, but I think it's worth showing. Now here, red looks to be in some serious, serious trouble. It, this piece is cornered, more or less, by these two kings here. And this piece is on the verge of getting captured. Well, it can't get king this way because this white king is just going to pin this piece and there's nothing red can do. So instead, red is going to get kinged here white is going to pin this piece by moving here. Star key move for red is there on that square. 
white captures, and now the ace in the hole. Really the best choice for white is just to give this piece back, or it could move here. Again, the double jump. And this time, red cannot be trapped, so the game is a draw. I want to end this video with a creative sequence that goes to show there's something in just about any position in checkers if you look hard enough. Here, white is up a piece, but it's cramped in its double corner, and really, red is kind of holding everything at bay. But there is a big sequence here, and let's start playing it out. First, white moves here and actually allows red to double jump it and get a king. Now, white is going to move here. Red is going to jump this piece. And now, the fireworks. White goes here. And we have not one, two, three, but the quadruple jump to execute the win. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you can deploy some of these tactical themes in your own games. There are still many more tactical themes and I'll cover them in future videos. If you haven't seen my videos discussing double and triple jumps, please check them out as they help lay the foundation for all checkers tactics. Thanks, as always, for watching.